Hello, and welcome to a very special 8-minute demo video series. Today, we're going through a video tutorial on OIS 6.3 Advanced Workflow Design and Best Practice Video Shorts. Yep, these are going to be smaller videos on specific topics. And the topic we're going to talk about right now is the junction object. So let's take a look at the junction object. You may have discovered it down in the workflow control category down here. You may have looked at it and gone, I don't know what this does. Well, today I hope to uh, resolve that quandary for you. So, obviously, if you bring it out here, it doesn't do much. There's not a lot of tabs. You click on this, there's not really anything offered here. That's because it doesn't really do anything unless there's other objects present. In fact, what it's meant to do is to use to converge multiple paths back to one object. So let's just put something together here. So we have a custom start to start everything out all off. And let's say we have two commands that we want to run simultaneously, command one and command two. And from here, once those are done, you want to converge back and then maybe send a notification or email or whatever, which will be represented by the send platform event. So now if we take a look at the junction object, we could see, as opposed to just none, we have run program or run program two, depending on which path you want to republish the data from. Now, you don't have to republish the data. By default, it is none. But what that means is we're going to start. These two will execute. Then when we get to here, all published data is dropped from this point, and we have to invent new published data or hard code things or you know, gather information from the system again, maybe with a query database or look at a file system or something like that. Now, if we want information from one of these paths, that's easy enough. We could just choose, finish, and now we can republish information from the path we've chosen. So there's some rules with how the data gets there, if it waits, and things like that. And in general, because the junction object allows published data to come from any branch or none, since we have two branches here or more, if one path arrives, let's say the run program path arrives first, then we'll wait here for the other object to complete before continuing on to the send platform. There are exceptions to that, obviously. If we are waiting for the second object and it fails, then the junction will continue if it is not pulling data or republishing data from that failed path. So in that scenario, we start here. Both of these execute. Let's say this takes two minutes and this takes one minute. This guy is republishing data from run program. This guy finishes. But we're still waiting on this guy. And if this guy fails, then we will not continue because the data is trying to be republished from there. Essentially, the workflow would stop. Now, if it was opposite and this guy failed, then we could continue since we're republishing data. Now, let's say this fails immediately and this one takes a minute. We're going to be here until this one completes, and then we'll move on. You should start getting the idea about the timing and what's successful and what's not. But in general, if one path arrives and the other path stops before reaching the junction, then the junction continues the workflow, assuming the failed path is not the path being published by the junction. So let's actually use this, and I'll show you how it works um, in the testing console so you can walk through it. So for this example, what we're going to do is execute on two different computers um, the same command, wait, obviously, for both of them to complete, and then just say we're done. So I'll just configure these on a different computer. Now, those are going to take almost exactly the same amount of time, but we're going to be running through the testing console, so I have to step through it anyway. This time, we're not going to pub republish anything. And for send platform event, we're just going to do information. All right. And then we'll test. Step over. Next. We we'll do these normally instantaneously. All right. It's not publishing anything. And then send platform event commands complete. And, you know, that that's a standard usage of this and we can see that both were successful there's the IP config information well sort of truncated for the view and this should be the dir information there we go all right now what if we wanted to republish some of the information from the run program in other words the IP config 
Well, I could certainly subscribe to it. You could see that I can subscribe to either. But unless I'm republishing, it will be blank. So I'm going to do pure output. And for the first test, we'll do run program, which is where we're getting the information from. All right, step over. Next, 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 next. And you can see we republish the data. Now, if we made changes to the junction and say republish from run program two, hit step over, next, next, next. Then it's blank because we're republishing from run program two, but the data we're referencing is from run program. All right, now let's simulate a delay. So I'm going to put a delay in the link here. 10 seconds. I'm going to change the name so I remember that I put a delay in there. And like I said in a previous video, I change, usually change those to purple. <laughs> so we'll just go along with that. And we're going to change this back to run program. And now we'll test it. All right, step over, next, next. Next. Now, we're waiting to continue. Now we can move on. And you can see there's the IP config information from the republish. Now that might be better suited if we actually check this in and run it. So I'm going to click start. And if we catch this, we might see the junction in. Yep. So you can see the junction is running. We're waiting to move on from this path. So it executed both, and the links aren't logged, so we can't actually see that. But then it went junction, send platform event. It didn't go custom start, run program, send platform event. You know, So it didn't jump over anything. It actually did delay, and then we waited for the objects in here. I could put a sleep in here, um, but I think you get the idea from that. Now, one of the other functions of the junction is to actually truncate the data. We showed that the first time when we chose none. Now, for things like this that are only going to output one set of data or non-multi-value data, it's not a big deal. But if we replaced one of these with a query database object, or simply added it to thread here, removing the delay, the, no need to put that in there. And then I'm just going to fill this out. And I have a query already for it. All right, this is going to output, let's see, 27 rows of data. So if we're republishing from run program, we don't have to worry about it because this will run once, 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 27, and then this will run once because we're republishing from something that came once, and then this guy will execute once. All right, let's run this through the testing console. Okay, we're just going to step over. Next, next, next. If we do next here, we could check out and we could see that we have multiple rows of data there. But the junction is only republishing from run program. So it's only going to execute once, and the send platform will only execute once. Now let's change that up and actually have it come from a query database. Now, as you'd expect, this will run once, but this will run 27 times because we're republishing the data from the query database object, which has you know, 27 items coming out of it based on the query that's in there. So let's test that out. Next, 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 next. All right, we've passed the junction. Now, because we are getting information from run program, we're not actually getting anything from the republishing. That doesn't matter because this object is still going to execute based on the rules 27 times. So if I just let that run, you'll see send platform just keep executing and executing with nothing, no information in it other than commands complete, but none of the data that from pure output is there, obviously, because we're not republishing from that path. All right, enough of that. Now, obviously, if we correct this and instead of from run program, we switch it over to query database and, the f and I hit, I'll just check this in and run it. We'll be able to see the results pretty quickly. If we go to the events, see how many commands complete I have. I bet there's 27 there. And of course, the, each individual lines of data are available there. 
one of the ways to get around this, you know, not having uh, multiple lines here. Obviously, you could flatten this, just like we talked about in the handling multi-value data. But the junction object, if as long as you do not access the data from that path that's generated the multiple values, then you're fine. And obviously, you'd have to re-tweak the workflow there. Now, uh, this is back to the normal state. Now, we'll just check that in. We're, we're not. We're done with that example. So I do have another example. So let's go take a look at that. And in this example, we have a custom start, and they have a parameter this time that's passing file name. And the use case here is we're going to query the database for information. Just four records. Actually, we have that. I'll change this up on the fly here. We have that information. We'll just get computer names and not priority. Change the connection to. All right. So we're going to get the 27. We're going to write it to a file that we pass in. So we are going to identify the file here. And then for the junction object, we're republishing the custom start path because we wanted to get that file name. Because let's say this was an email object and we want the information from the database to be sent in the email, but we don't want 27 emails or 27 platform events. For that matter, I'm going to clean these out so we can see that only one happened. But we're going to pass the file name here, just as maybe we could even do it as an attachment if there was an email. But this is just going to simulate one execution for the notification based on the execution of this workflow, where this is going to execute once, once, 27 times, once, and once. We're actually going to just check this in and run it from the operator console. So we could see the events and the file being created. There it is. Start it up. And then in this demo folder, I'll create a computers2. TXT. Start it up. And then see that it's running. The junction is waiting for this to complete. And then in events, you can see we got one event with the name of the, the path. So if that was an attachment, we could have attached the file. And if we go out here, we have computers2, and it has the 27 records. All right, and this is a very common use case for the junction, where we're getting information from a custom start, maybe because you're chaining policies together. And it needs to go from start of the policy to the end, maybe to a trigger. And you don't want to trigger the next policy 100 times based on the data that's you know, being generated throughout this policy. So the junction object works perfect here because we can easily republish from something that's going to execute once as opposed to something that will execute multiple times. All right, with those examples of junction, we've covered off on the major use cases and probably the only use cases for the junction, which are converging multiple paths, just like we are here. And along with converging multiple paths, we can actually um, choose the data that we're going to republish. We can choose that data so that the objects that are after the junction are going to execute exactly like we want to. So just be aware of what you're republishing, what's on the data bus at any given time, what your links are allowing, and things like that. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.